All right, guys, I've gotten uh, a request to do a couple of the homework problems um, uh, in preparation for the quiz tomorrow. So uh, I've been asked to do number 55 and 56. So these are good problems. So let's do them out. Uh, so let's start off with problem number 55. This is a little bit of a different problem. What we've got here is we've got this car that's rolling down this incline before it finally hits a cliff. And does the projectile thing into the water below and we're told that, the, that this cliff here or this uh this this incline or decline is 50 meters long and we're told that it's at an angle here 34 degrees below the horizontal so or uh 24 so it's negative 24 degrees this angle right here so the car goes down this incline or decline and it speeds up and it speeds up at a rate of four meters per second squared and then of course when it gets to the end when it gets to the cliff here it's going to go off the cliff right so it's going to have a velocity there v it's also going to be at this angle of negative 24 degrees um, so that's the, the first part of the problem we're going to see here is we've got to figure out what that v is right what is the initial velocity of the car of course once the car goes off the cliff it does the projectile thing and what we're really looking for is this delta x value how far away from the base of the cliff does it land so we have to kind of do two things in this problem first of all we've got to figure out this v what is that velocity um, and to figure out that velocity we need to use some of our old kinematic equations in particular uh, i'm going to choose to use this equation can't forget our old kinematic equations. This is just a, uh, um, an issue where we've got a, a, an object that's accelerating. We know the acceleration. We know the distance that the acceleration is occurring over. We also are told in the problem that V initial right here is zero. The car starts from rest. So effectively, this V here that we're solving for, we're looking for that V, is going to be our V final. Now, the V final for this segment, of course, is going to be the V initial for the next part of the problem, which is uh, the projectile motion part of the problem. So what I'm going to get here for V final, V final is just going to be the square root of 2 times 4 times 50. That's going to be the square root of 400 or 20. So 20 is our V. This is our starting V here is 20. So this is 20. So now I can begin the projectile motion part of the problem. Okay, I know now the initial velocity is 20 meters per second. I know that velocity is at an angle of 24 degrees below the horizontal. So I'm going to use theta equals negative 24. Um, and I'm looking for delta x. Okay, might be worth writing that down. Theta is negative 24. Uh, that's supposed to be a 4. V initial is 20 meters per second. I also know that this cliff is 30 meters high, so delta y equals negative 30. So, of course, the equation I'm going to use here, I'm going to say that delta x to solve the problem is v sub x, which is 20 cosine negative 24 times t. So if I can figure out how long this car is going to be in the air for, I can plug that in for t and I'm all set. And, of course, the t is going to come from our delta y. So I'm going to say negative 30 equals 20 sine negative 24 minus oh, t times t minus 4.9 t squared. Um, this sine of negative 20 sine negative 24 equals about negative 8.1. So I'm going to now say um, negative 30 equals negative 8.1 t minus 4.9 t squared. And of course, I'm going to have to, this is going to be a quadratic equation that I'm going to have to solve. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are fairly confident in doing that, but let me just move everything over to the left-hand side of the equation first. Um, 4.9t squared plus 8.1t minus 30 equals 0. Go ahead and do the solve that quadratic equation however you want to do it, quadratic formula, graphing, however you choose to do it. Uh, you should get a t value here of about 1.78 seconds when you do that out. And now I'm going to plug that in right up here. So my delta x ends up being 20 cosine negative 24 times 
this basically becomes 1.78. Do that out, and you get 32.5 meters. So fun problem. Um, it's good because we had to remember some of our old kinematic equation, uh, one-dimensional stuff using this equation here. Uh, for the first part of the problem, to find the initial velocity for the projectile motion problem, and then it was a pretty standard projectile motion problem. We used the delta y to find t and plug that into a delta x equation. Um, but definitely that first step, maybe you haven't seen that equation in a while, so that was uh, maybe a little bit of a refresher of previously learned information. Um, also, making sure that you use a negative value for the theta, that was a little bit different than some of the problems we've done. If you didn't make theta negative 24, that could have screwed up your answer. Um, but hopefully that makes sense and uh, you can do it on the quiz. Alright, so let's go to the next problem I wanted to do, which was um, problem 56. This is similar to some of the problems I've done before. This is one of those tricky problems where you don't have the initial velocity, right? So you're just given that this golf ball is going to travel a delta x value. We're told in the problem of 240 meters. And the only other thing we know is that it's launched at an angle of 34 degrees. So um, I'm going to do this the way we've done these problems in the past. I'm going to set up a delta x equation. Delta x equals 240. Okay, so 240 equals v cosine 34 t. And then I'm going to set up a delta y equation. Delta y is 0, and that's v sine 34 t minus 4.9 t squared. And since, so here I now have a system of equations to work with right here. I've got two equations with two variables. It's the same v, and it's the same t, so I can solve um, using a substitution. So as I've said before, the way I recommend you do the substitution is to take this equation and solve for v in terms of t. So v equals 240 divided by cosine 34 t. And now, so I've solved for v in terms of t. Now I plug this whole thing right here. This whole thing goes into this equation there. So we've seen this a few times now. Hopefully the pattern is starting to look familiar. So now I get, for this equation here, 0 equals 240 divided by cosine 34t all times sine 34t minus 4.9t squared. And I can see, as before, this is, not, is quite handy because now these t's are going to go away. And I get 240 sine 34 over cosine 34, which is the same thing as 240 tangent 34 minus 4.9t squared. And now I can go ahead and solve for t. You didn't have to do this. Uh, I've said this before, but you didn't have to do that tangent thing. You could have just evaluated sine 34 and divided by cosine 34. But this perhaps saves you a little bit of time. Um, you do this out, and you should get for your t value that the t value, when you take the square root here, is about 2 point, or uh, no, 5.74 seconds. Now, for the first part, by the way, this is only part A that I'm doing right now. I'm only doing part A here. Now, I plug this T value back up in here to get my V, because part A says, what's the velocity that the ball was hit with? So I plug that in for T, and I get a velocity of about 50 meters per second. Hopefully that makes some sense. We've seen that pattern before, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, let's do part B. If we can, I'll just go to a new page here. So part B now is asking us to find the maximum height, right? So you're going to have this parabola here, and we know now that this golf ball was hit right at this angle here with a speed, we're told, with this angle here is 34 degrees, and the speed now we know is... 50 meters per second that it was hit with. And now we're looking for this, this maximum height, what we've been calling delta y max. 
is what we're looking for. That's just the delta y equation. So delta y max is going to be 50 sine 34 times t minus 4.9 t squared. The question is, what do we put in for t? What is the, the time that it takes the ball to get to the maximum height? What is t? So we've got to figure out what t value to put in here. Now, to find the t value, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember here that at, the, at delta y max, vy equals 0. And I'm going to say vy equals 0, and that's equal to v initial y plus gt. Go ahead and solve this out. I know v initial y is 50 sine 34, so I get t equals 50 sine 34 divided by 9.8. And that gives me a t value of about 2.85 seconds. Now, some of you might have realized that since the delta y for this problem is 0, right, the ball begins and ends at the same place, delta y is 0. Because of that fact, the time to the top, this time here, is exactly half of the total time. In other words, it's half of the time we found over here, right? It's half of this because delta y is 0. Now, I bothered to go through this step here. I went through this step because... Um, if delta y weren't zero, you couldn't make that assumption, so you'd have to do this. All right, well, now I can plug this t value into my equation here. So I get 50 sine 34 times 2.85 minus 4.9 times 2.85 squared. And that gives me 40 meters. And that's the final answer. But again, I hope that makes sense. I hope I haven't made any mistakes. I did that rather quickly. Hopefully, I didn't screw anything up there to further confuse you. But that's the, the, the principle, the, uh, the approach there. Um, should be familiar. Again, we've done a bunch of these problems. So I um, hope that helps. Um, good luck with your studying, and uh, good luck. I will see you tomorrow.